It's one of the most luxurious and soft tissues in the world. To get a kilogram of silk, you need around 2,500 silkworms. But how do you make silkworms? Get ready to discover the amazing process of creating silk. Join us on a fascinating journey as we unravel the secrets of the silkworms creation and the delicate extraction of the valuable cocoons. The legend says that the silk was discovered when a cocoon fell into the Chinese emperor's tea, unraveling a long and silky thread. Today, more than two-thirds of the 410,000 tons of silk produced in the world come from China. But to make the best threads, the silk enthusiasts travel to Thailand. These villagers continue the traditions of their ancestors, weaving high-quality silk by hand. Thai silk is considered one of the best in the world. And to create the best fabric, you start with the best insects. These little bugs are called silkworms. In silk factories, the process begins with the feeding of the worms. This step is essential to ensure the availability of the worms and their proper development. Healthy and fertile adult females are chosen for reproduction. The females are placed in a box or in a suitable environment to lay their eggs. Adult females lay the eggs in a suitable substrate, such as paper or mulberry branches, which is the main source of food for silkworms. It is assured that the environmental conditions are optimal for egg incubation. Eggs are kept in temperature and humidity controlled conditions to facilitate their development. This is achieved in incubators specially designed to maintain the appropriate conditions for egg hatching. They begin as eggs the size of the heat of a pin, and once they hatch, they begin to fatten. After a period of incubation, the eggs hatch and small saver worms emerge, known as larvae. They have a very small size at birth and begin to feed on mulberry leaves for their growth. The larvae of zebra worms are placed in cages or trays where fresh mulberry leaves are provided. Zebra worms feed voraciously during this stage. Since their main objective is to grow and increase in size, it is essential that they maintain adequate temperature, humidity, and ventilation conditions to ensure the well-being of the zebra worms during their growth. The breeding of silkworms is a delicate pair that requires constant care and attention to ensure their healthy development. To become silk-producing larvae, these insects will have to multiply their weight by 10,000 times. They are maniacal and strictly vegetarian and only eat mulberry leaves, hand-collected mulberry leaves. On this ranch, they collect more than two tons a week. The leaves are cut into small pieces and placed on cages or trays so that the worms can easily access them. The quantity and quality of the mulberry leaves provided to the silkworms is supervised. It is important to make sure that they always have enough food and replace the dry or damaged leaves to ensure optimal nutrition. A regular cleaning of the boxes or trays is carried out to remove the feces and the remains of dry leaves. This helps to maintain a clean environment and reduces the risk of diseases or infections among silkworms. After the worms have grown and fed properly, it is time for them to start forming their silk cocoons. This step is crucial in the silk production process. After 40 days and 40 nights of eating non-stop, the larvae are ready to go to bed. But before their nap, the worms begin the task of weaving a cocoon that will protect them and turn them into butterflies. The silkworms begin to produce a special liquid substance through the silk glands located in their head. This substance quickly solidifies in contact with the air and forms a continuous thread that wraps around the worm's body. Each caterpillar can produce almost a kilometer of silk to cover itself. After three or four days of knitting, the cocoon is ready. During this time, the silkworms remain inside the cocoon, protected and safe. The formation of the cocoons is a critical stage in the production process of the silk as the cocoons contain the precious silk threads that will be used in the fabrication of the luxurious and elegant fabrics. Once the silkworms complete the formation of their cocoons, it is time to carefully collect them. The collection of the cocoons is a delicate process that ensures the obtaining of the valuable silk threads that will be used in the fabrication of the luxurious and elegant fabrics. Once the silkworms have completed the formation of their cocoons, it is time to carefully collect them. The collection of the cocoons is a delicate process that ensures the obtaining of valuable silk threads. The factory workers carefully examine the cocoons and select those that are in the optimal conditions for their collection. The cocoons are separated one by one, being careful not to damage the silk threads that surround them. 
The collected cocoons are classified according to their quality and size. Larger and more uniform cocoons generally produce better quality and longer silk threads. To prevent the larvae from hatching and breaking the silk threads, the collected cocoons are subjected to a thermal treatment. The cocoons are placed in hot water or steamed for a specific period of time. This kills the worms inside the cocoons and facilitates the extraction. Unrolling and extraction of the threads is carried out. Several cocoon threads come together to form a stronger and more continuous thread, which facilitates its subsequent processing and weaving. The fibers are bound by a protein called sericin. For this reason, the cocoons are immersed in hot water that softens the sericin and sweeps the filaments. A cocoon of a silk thread is only a few hundred thousandths thick. 5,000 cocoons and 30 hours are necessary for the workers to wind just one silk thread. The silk factory workers carry out this task with care and precision to guarantee the obtaining of high-quality silk threads. The collected silk threads are subjected to a cleaning process to eliminate impurities, residues of the cocoon, and any other unwanted substance. The threads are washed carefully in warm water or dipped in soft cleaning solutions to preserve the quality and shine of the silk. The problem with wet silk is that it is very fragile, and you don't want to break a thread that you've spent all day getting. The most ingenious solution is to sprinkle it with rice, which absorbs the moisture immediately. The silk thread is wound around a hole, a very old instrument that measures the length of the thread. If you want to color the silk, the dyeing process is carried out. The silk threads are immersed in natural or chemical dyes to obtain the desired colors. The dyeing is carried out with caution to ensure a uniform distribution of color in the threads. The threads are wound to facilitate their manipulation during the weaving process. Weaving can be done manually or using specialized machinery. The threads are twisted and joined together to form the strongest, most continuous threads to be used in the manufacture of silk fabrics. Weaving can be done manually or using specialized machinery, depending on the scale of production. The silk threads are carefully intertwined to create a soft, light, and elegant fabric with a wide variety of patterns and textures. The tool that transforms them into clothing is satin. To handle this fine apparatus, a great deal of skill, concentration, and resistance are needed. After 40 hours of knitting, sewing, and trimming, we only have half a rug. In factories, the principle is the same as in the traditional process, but on a much more impressive scale. Instead of the two or three kilos that are made by hand in the village, a Swedish automated machine shears an immense amount of 100 kilos of silk per day. Some colossal mechanical looms weave rolls of three meters of fabric in just a few minutes. They equalize the village's production in a few hours, creating a wide variety of fabrics from a curtain to the most modern tie. Once the silk has been processed and turned into soft and beautiful fabrics, it is time for its marketing and distribution. Like the video if you liked it, and share it with someone else who may be interested. If you want to learn how chocolate is made, click on the video link on the screen. Also, subscribe to this channel by activating the notifications to keep learning. Greetings.